What's up, it's <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Bradley here. Uh, channel memberships are coming at some point. Um, and if you want to support the channel even further, I do streams Tuesday, Saturday, 2 p.m. CST. We'll be able to send in music and I'll react to it live. It's a ridiculous price, but it helps support the channel. Take care of both me and my fiance. So if you're interested in that, see you Tuesday and Saturday. Just know there's also a big community. It's a super fun thing. And uh, yeah, that's about it. got bad news you guys we're not actually listening to blonde today i have uh i've tricked you all i'm just kidding i've tricked you again we are indeed listening to blonde hello everyone my name is bradley i have a bread taste of music and it's time to re-listen to the frank ocean album titled blonde uh, here it is, right here. This album is critically acclaimed across the board. Everybody loves this album, except for me, of course. I said it's boring, which, yeah, it was boring when I heard it. Four years ago, it's been four years since I've listened to this album. It's It's been a long time, all right? In fact, I might have even just written that review four years ago, and I think it was actually five years ago that I listened to the project. Anyways, the only thing I know about this album, the only thing I know is the fact that it's titled Blonde, uh, with an E, and on the cover it has no E, which to me signals that it's probably going to be an album about uh, Frank Ocean's struggles with sexuality, as that is the one thing that separates the two words, is one is for male, one is for female. And you may be asking Bradley, wh what do you mean that that's all you know about the album? You've listened to the album before, right? It was so long ago, and I just did not care at all about what I was hearing. I thought that Nikes was annoying which, with pitch shifting, and I just, I couldn't get into this album at all. I was just struggling. I was not invested in any of the drama involving Odd Future at all, or any of that crap. So that was just not interesting to me in, in the slightest, and I just didn't care for this album uh, in terms of the sound. Yeah, maybe it's Frank Ocean just struggling with spelling. Wow. Oh my god, we cracked the case, you guys. That's very homophobic of you. Anyways, we're gonna give it another shot today. Uh, it's an hour long, it's 17 tracks, that's a lot. I'm actually gonna grab some water, so while I'm doing that, um, I'm gonna play you guys this song again. Anyways, if I'm acting a little bit weird, it's because I just ate a really big cookie, and I feel sick, which is probably not the best idea. Honestly, you don't know, you don't know if Brad will enjoy this, let's be honest here, okay? Let's discuss the facts, alright? I'm extremely homophobic, okay, and I'm extremely racist. There is a 0% chance that I enjoy this album. In fact, we could just end the video here, all right? Thank you, everyone, for watching. That's, uh, that's what we're going to end it on. You know, instead of listening to Blonde, how about we just listen to Never Give You Up on repeat? <laughs> hey, no cameras. Me not working hard. Yeah, right. Picture no, that, no, no Kodak. Kodak. I better yet go to Times no. Square, take a picture no, of pit, me with a pit Kodak. Bull. I don't need any pictures, please. No Kodaks, okay? No Kodaks, no cameras, no pen and paper. All right, no Steven Spielberg. I don't need any of that. Hey, no jail time, okay? People demand a scam wheel. We gotta do that again. Scam wheels are fun. So yeah, I wasn't a fan of Nikes when I first heard it. Pink and White was like the only thing that stuck with me is because I liked the instrumental and I thought the singing was sweet. But I think one of the things about this album is everyone was like jerking it off with how, you know, oh my God, Frank Ocean, best singer of all time. I guess I was expecting the vocals to just carry everything. And then I was like, okay, it's the most skeletal instrumentals possible. And I just wasn't really feeling, I wasn't feeling the love on this. So, uh, with that being said, I'm hoping that I get more value out of it this time around. I have matured a lot, so hopefully the subject matter of this project will stick out a little bit more. Uh, and with that being said, first song, Nikes. Let's go. DJ Khaled! These bitches want Nikes. These bitches want Wow, is that a real blonde? Bro, this ain't boring. Y'all just ain't sad enough. These bitches want Nikes. They looking for a check. Tell them it ain't likely. She need a ring like Carmelo. It must be on that white like Othello. All you want is Nikes, but the real ones just like you, just like me. I don't play. I don't make time. But if you need dick, I got you. Yeah, I'm not sad enough to understand these remarkably 
emotionally complicated lyrics right here. It's remarkable, dude. Just truly, you know, I mean, my, my heart just exploding when I hear about how these bitches want Nikes. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm dying. I mean, sure, this part where he's talking about, you know, people who've passed away, yeah. Brad, stop trying to hate it. Dude, I'm not vibing with this at all. The pitch shifting about this fuckboy garbage, this, this ain't doing it for me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It symbolizes how he's afraid to share his real voice yet. That's fair. I, I can get that. I, I can understand that. The higher voice is his younger self. I appreciate the context here, because it, it does paint a bigger picture. We'll let you guys prophesy. Oh, wow. We'll let you guys prophesy. We'll let you guys prophesy. We gon' see the future first. Living so the last night. Feels like a past night. Speaking of the don't work out in the people. Double people says so. Always demon shot a body jump. Why you think I'm in this bitch? Why the fuck you got my it on me like the brain. We ain't crumbles in the glitter. Brain. Glitter. Then, you got a I can't not cry at this, you psychopath, because I'm trying to understand exactly what's going on. I'm kind of getting a bigger picture by the end here, which I appreciate. I, I feel like I'm not just trying to write this completely off. It says that Nike's is a critique of the trapping of materialistic uh, hedonis, uh, hedonism with the frequent mentions of Nike shoes, shining gl gold and glitter, the fantasies of pleasure. If it is a critique of this, I don't know if it's doing the best job at convincing me of that, but I do like how it ends here. It does seem like he's kind of... Uh, emotionally unstable and looking to disrupt something in order to feel better about himself which i actually kind of like how this finishes it it sort of leaves an impact even though i think that this song in general is ass -aroni. i don't like the skeletal beat on this at all it's a bit of a mess i think the pitch shifting sounds like ass even if it's supposed to be a younger self but i do think that the full artistic statement does kind of land it has me scratching my head a little bit it's a low shrug don't love it but I can see potential, and I can see this growing, so, you know. All right. Hey. <laughs> I really firmly believe you need to rehear the album and make memories to it. It's really good when you see the big picture. I mean, I agree with the part where it seems like something you might have to listen to a couple of times to, to really understand the full narrative of, but anyways. Uh, next song, Ivy. I thought that I was dreaming when you said you love me. me. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, well, a lot of the complaints I had about Nikes I don't have here. This is very easy to follow along with, but it's very complicated. Uh, emotionally, it's it's sort of like a jumbling of trying to get things uh, across, but the singing here is stellar. I like the instrumental. It's very floaty. It's not very distracting, which I think was a big issue I had originally with this album is the instrumentals being so bare bones that I just felt like it might have been... It might as well have just been spoken word, you know? Uh, but here, I feel like because it's so emotionally dense and there's so much to unpack that I actually think that this all together comes as a uh, as a really strong full package. Enchanting is a good way of putting it, yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. I never listened to Channel Orange, and I was thinking of doing that first before doing this, but I didn't think it would really strike as much of a headline as uh, returning to Blonde, you know? Um, but I figured that if people like this video, if people like this stream or whatever, then I will go listen to that afterwards. I know. I haven't listened to it. Yeah, well, we, we can do a video next uh, on that. You know, of course, if we get a million likes on this video, that is. But we both know that deep down, the ceiling's still deep down. You ain't a kid no more. It's not the same. I've reason I thought that I was dreaming. Imagine being so rich you could put out one album per decade. I mean, look, that's the thing. It's like, sure, I wasn't really super fond of Blonde when I first heard it, but I can imagine, like, with the reception this thing had. It's, Frank Ocean's one of those artists that when they come back, the whole world is waiting for them. You know what I mean? Screaming on this track is terrible? I disagree. I don't think it's nearly as grating as the last track. I actually think that everything is very contained and pretty. <laughs> Wow, I gotta say, that ending, 
not only is it creative, but it's effective. I mean, that is crushing. Like, it's it's different. I mean, it's so different than anything I could have expected, but the, I've been dreaming of you just destroyed, and, and you got this warm palette, but then everything just sort of becomes, like, feedback at the very end. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing the way that ended. Okay, so this is what I was hoping for. It's like these details are really coming to uh, coming to form. And I'm starting to see the bigger picture a lot more. <laughs> I, I gotta say that if there was ever a chance for this album to completely recontextualize and mean something more to me, Ivy is, uh, I guess, the best chance of this happening. It is absolutely stellar. It's a huge smiley ball. I'd give it like a nine. I thought that this track, in terms of the emotional complexity, the sound, the it, it kept me engaged despite how stripped back it was. And it just had an amazing, powerful ending. I mean, this this is absolutely amazing. All right. <laughs> okay. That was good. All right. Was, that's a lot better. Nikes, I didn't f*** with all that much. But you know what? Maybe if Ivy was the album star, you know? But let's not start theory crafting yet, okay? I'm going to start pissing off a lot of people. Next song, Pink and White. <laughs> So this is the only song I really enjoyed when I first listened to this album uh, all that much, and it's because it w it had a bit more bump to it, which I mean maybe should show you where my head was at at the time. You know, Ivy was so powerful. I'm I'm curious to see if this is even uh, an acceptable follow up to something as potent as that. If the sky is pink and white, if the ground. Oh, wait, hold on. This seems like it's a, a continuation narratively of the previous track with just that's the way every day goes every time we have no control. Like that ending of the last song literally felt like a, a, a frustration at the lack of a con of control over a situation. And this almost seems like the acceptance at the end of it. It's black and yellow. Nod my head, don't close my eyes. If you could fly, then you feel south. Up north, getting cold soon. The way it is, we're on land. So I have someone to hold you. Keep it cool when it's still alive. Won't let you down when it's all ruined. Yeah. the hell any of this crap meant when i enjoyed this song back in the day but i gotta say contextually in terms of the narrative of this album it's brilliant it's a it's a wonderful emotional i guess juxtaposition to the previous track as things are falling apart this is more like trying to capture the good trying to remember the good trying to hold on to it and it is absolutely beautiful and i think it helps that the piano is stellar the beat is stellar i mean this this song is amazing i'd say it's a uh <laughs> uh I'm feeling a I mean, I already enjoyed the song, but I gotta say the context of this, not only this Beyonce to in the background, I mean, the sound of this, the way that it just captures such a, a beautiful atmosphere almost seamlessly and just, I don't know, man, it's, that, that one really, that one's really good. That's a really good song. Okay, okay, I see you. Oh, wow, that was loud. <laughs> Many college students have gone to college and gotten hooked on drugs. 
Don't try to be someone else. Oh, yo, wait, you're right. That's like Hobson levels of genius. Many college students have gone to college. Yo, yo. Rely and trust upon your own decisions. I'm a genius to the name Donna. When people become weed heads, they become sluggish, lazy, stupid, and unconcerned. I mean, look, as a former weed head, okay, I'd like to, uh, you might be thinking I'm about to object. I'm not. I'm actually doubling down. I, I actually think that that's very, uh, that's very accurate. So, uh, you know, I'm just putting my two cents in, uh, in there. This is mom. This is mom. Okay, that's oh. wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? You know what? That's a good point, Kevin O'Leary. I didn't even think about that. See, this is why we need, uh, people behind me, you know, giving, giving important advice. Uh, beyond this so uh th thank you thank you for that okay i actually kind of like that I, I i think that it went on a little bit long it's sort of a shrug for me like i just it makes sense in the album but would i skip it every time yeah probably be yourself gives context to basically the entire rest of this album and it's very important even for the next track actually especially for the next track it's a smiley ball for me i disagree i wouldn't skip it every time i actually think that it adds so much value to the album that it is uh it is essential for the full experience. Oh my god. I'm thinking up the I'm solo. I'm Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. That's right. Hand me a towel, I'm dirty dancing by myself, gone off tabs, but I asked for Well, he didn't listen. There you go. Well, there it is. Alright, so his mom's saying don't do drugs, and he's immediately saying, I'm fucking dirty dancing. I did the motherfucking drugs. Alright. Also, I gotta stop swearing. I really do, cause uh Cause YouTube doesn't like that. Me a circle, watch my Jagger and hit a solo. We too loud in public, then police turn down a function, and we don't gotta be solo. Now stay away from highways, my eyes like them red lights. Right now I prefer yellow, red bone, so mellow, fuck around, be cutting you. Think we were better off solo. You know, the, when I first listened to this album, solo was pretty much the point where I just stopped giving a. Fuck. I think I remember hearing that interlude, and I was like, I heard solo, and I was like. <laughs> And then I think I turned the album off and gave it a five. And then I think I returned back to it like, okay, I'll give it another shot. And I continued on. And then I was like, nope, not feeling it. And then I gave it a five. Now, with the context, though, I'm actually a lot more invested in the story and what's going on. Because he's just riding around, getting high as a motherfucker. He's saying he doesn't want to be solo, you know? It seems like this, he's, he's sort of reflecting on a memory here. Me and I owe you two grams in the sunrise. Solo. So Oh yeah, solo and so low. Oh, that's right. Solo. Which also, I mean, considering the title being blonde with an E and without an E, I would not be surprised for it being intentional, being so low as in single and so low as in feeling so low or being at a low point or even eyes so low because you're smoking that good ga uh, ganja. In the city's on fire, fire. In hell, in hell, in hell in hell, oh, I never even knew you said in hell. I thought you said in hell, that's heaven, which also makes sense. In hell, in hell, that's heaven, bro. Okay, not that's not gonna let that's, that's kind of good. Okay, that's kind of good. There's a bullet in the door, in the sky. In hell, in hell, there's heaven. Oh, 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 oh. Yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? <laughs> that clinic killed my soul, but you gotta hit the pussy, Roto. What is? Oh my God! Fucking that bit with no condom, hey, dude. It's just a baby reference. What is this? What is happening here? I'm, I'm. Uh, it's about abortion. Wait, what? He left a woman pregnant. Uh, then he went to court. Hey, baby, mama ain't so vicious. She, all she wants to pick a fence and you protect. Well, let you fly solo. Oh, I see. He hit the pussy raw, and he got someone pregnant, and now she's grabbing him by his nuts. And she's the old ball and chain. God, this women, am I right? This is why we got to resort to men, all right? Because men don't have this problem. But I ain't gay, though. You know, I'm, I ain't gay. There's there's a difference between being gay and what I'm advocating for. I ain't gay, all right? Right over that night, I brought you used to blow through, but it's just me and no you stayed up till my phone died. Smoking big, rolling. Solo. It's hell on the Exactly. I'm not gay. I'm being responsible. <laughs> The poetry here is not only stellar on a first listen, but it seems like something that there is even more to unpack out of. Like, for example, this one line. Um, bones feeling dense as fuck. Wish, uh, uh, I guess, uh, wish, wish I would. <laughs> uh, 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 guys, I, I need help here, okay? Can I get the pass for a second? Wait, can I really sit in one of my...
No, that can't happen. Okay, I'll just say, wish a fellow would cross bones, crossing, cross bones. You know, there's references to death and and the afterlife here. But that's the thing is, I don't want to say neighbor because you know who says neighbor. Okay, you don't want to be you don't want to be like that. All right. I'm just saying, that's why it's so difficult. That's why I don't say brother or neighbor because then 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 you become whatever the fuck you just heard. That's what you become. By myself. Yeah, I just say person because you know I don't see color at all. You know I just see people. Uh. Oh, and there's a solo at the end. Look at that. To add to everything, there's a solo. Okay, now I don't use this word uh, lightly. I really don't. But I do believe that this song is genius. I, I really think that this is the product of taking a lot of time and a lot of great ideas and coming together with something that just works. And I'm telling you, like, this is where I gave up on the album when I first heard it. Because I just didn't get it. I didn't care. I thought it was super stripped back and uninteresting. But man, I don't know, man. It's like, what, the more you think about it, the more there is to get out of it. And it just feels like a endless, rewarding experience. It's a smiley ball for me. The nine, it's pretty good. That ain't, that ain't, I gotta say. And again, I promise you, this is not some sort of publicity stunt. If I thought this was boring and I didn't get it and I didn't care, I would tell you, but everything here works. Everything. From the moment it starts to the moment it ends, it feels super curated, like very intentional. So go, let's see where it continues. I'm actually very excited. Next song, uh, next song, Skyline 2. This is joy, this is summer battle. Necessary, all right. Sweet love, taking time. That's a pretty fucking fast year flew by. Pretty long third gear in this car. Pretty fucking underneath moonlight now. So pretty fucking becomes an actual term. Uh, he's saying it's a pretty fucking fast year that flew by, and this is very much obviously a reflection of the past. Talking about a uh, a memory of summer, but it's interesting as it's uh, spoken immediately like it's happening, but then. Very quickly, it seems like, wait, no, it, I don't know. It seems like he's talking in the past tense about something uh, immediately after saying like something's very in the moment, but then he's saying pretty fucking, but then that's because he's pretty fucking underneath the moonlight now, and then it's all night that it's happening until the sun beams. Bruh. I think DJ Khaled produced that part. Okay, I want to figure some stuff out here, because it, it seems like this is just all a reflection vibe track, which I guess it, it works in terms of the sound and understanding, I guess, the, the feeling and vibe that this album's setting up pretty well. But I wonder what new information this actually adds to the album, because uh, it, it doesn't really seem to add a whole lot. Yeah, so it does seem like if what it's doing is it's like... Uh, I don't know, just setting up a vibe, and it's doing a great job at that. I think that the lyrics are nice, uh, great poetry throughout here, and an absolutely stellar solo. I think it's fantastic. It's a smiley ball. It's about him feeling like life is going faster and life going by him, or life slowly going by him. Oh, yeah, self control. Okay, I do kind of understand the more juvenile behavior that happens when the vo voice is pitched up. It actually does make a lot more sense. Uh, and this, look, I've, I've discussed this many times in albums, and it's actually really nice seeing this come together because it's one of those things that's like, on a surface level, it's like nonsense, you know? It's like, why the hell is this going on? Well, with the explanation that it is supposed to be a more juvenile early self, it actually adds a ton more context into the album, especially with Nikes, and in the beginning here, it seems like this, it's, it's, it's almost like clearly saying this is a memory of back in the days when things were simpler, like, instantly, and I think a big reason that is, is because the seriousness that is being taken throughout the rest of this album, where it's like the pitched up stuff is just sort of a spice to give context, I guess, if, if any of that makes sense. Live a life I oh my, guys, he said the word! He said the word. What are we, some kind of blonde?
This could be a Harry Styles song. Yo, yo, that's that's genius, dude. Cause I made you your self control. And oh. Made me lose my self control. My self control. Keep a place for me. For me. I sleep. This other person is totally grown up. While Frank Ocean has stayed in this juvenile state and they just aren't on the same frequency anymore and he's hoping that they keep a place for him. That is that is heart wrenching, dude. Holy shit. Keep a place. Is young Lean? I almost cried, but I didn't because I'm not gay. Red headphones. Dog. You're crying, not me. I, I ain't a bitch. All right. That's for bitches. Shut up. Hey, no cameras. You're not working hard. Hey, no cameras. Yeah, right. No, picture shut up, Pitbull. No better pictures. Yet, go to Times Square, take a picture no. of me with a Kodak. No pictures of me with a Kodak. I don't think you'll ever listen all the talk of commercialism on a rent, but current culture versus my eyes. It comes across an insincere. But, oh, yo, what? Insincere? But this motherfucker ain't trying to be a saint. This guy is putting his flaws there out on display, and he is a broken man. And you feel that in the very end, as it seems like he just is doing the same thing again. It's the same cycle. Him expecting this person who's grown up and moved on to just screw around with him one more time. And it's like he's just sort of calling out to nowhere. And oh my, my heart, I can't take it. I cannot take it, dude. I'm, I can't. I'm feeling. Dude, I'm, I'm heartbroken. I'm actually on the edge of tears, but I will not cry and I refuse to cry, okay? You may see little sprinkles, all right? But that's just my defenses going down for a second before they come back up, all right? That's that's just natural washing out of the, um, anyways, let's continue, okay? Wow. Okay, all right, next, good guy, all right, good guy. It's a good guy, healed it up. His highlights when I was convinced. Bitches like that, my nigga. That shit, Jasmine fucking wrecked my heart. I don't even know how to feel about bitches. It Wait, hold on a second. So, what's going on here? I'm confused. So, I hooked up with someone who took him to a gay bar. He's gay? Yeah, but like, it. But then there's the implication that there's there's the talk. I don't know. Anyways, I feel like it's given context. Hopefully, it unfolds into something. I think it's an okay interlude. I, I mean, it gives context, but it's on, on its own. It doesn't do much. It's a struggle. He has me asking more questions than uh, it gives answers, which I honestly think might be a good thing for this project. So let's continue. Nights. Round your city, round the clock. Don't even got nobody being honest with you. You can't break the law with them. Get some good she have a calm night. Pause! That is a sin. I don't care who does. I don't care if it's Frank Ocean. I don't care if it's gonna. Alright, you call see gushy? That is disgusting. Please get some gushy. No. Killing left and right. Working through your worst night. I hope the sack is full up. So what the hell is going on? Round your city, round the clock. Everyone needs you. No, you can't make everybody equal, although you got a, a big up family. You don't even got nobody being honest with you. So it's someone who's very busy all the time, but at the same time, not really having anyone they can trust. Breathe till I evaporated. My whole body see through transportation handmade. Oh, wait, are they talking about themselves? Uh, and overworking themselves, but at the same time, not having anyone they can trust. Uh, and I know it better than most people. I don't trust them anyways. You can't break the law with them. It gets some good. You have a good night. He's talking about I can't trust them hoes. Shooters killing left and right. I'm thinking he's talking about shooting, you know, shooting splooge. <laughs> Spend it when I get that. It seems like Frank Ocean here has become very sour and very bitter, feeling like they're just suppressing their emotions, which I think, again, kind of goes back to uh, the Be Yourself interlude, where it doesn't really feel like he's doing that. It feels like he's pushing everything down uh, and just being an asshole to literally everyone around him, but at the same time, I get it. It feels like playing a character with, with displaying this, but but it also feels like it's coming from a real place. Good, I I, I understand it.
Okay. Every night fucks every day up. Every day patches the night up. Oh! oh. So this song brilliantly goes between this feeling of a nightlife and just sort of being out of control and just sort of bubbling up and eventually it's like if it, it feels like a, a waking up like every night and every day is like the same sh it's like the full cycle of this track is just brilliant the way it comes together it still has me asking a lot of questions but it's nothing that i feel like needs an answer right now and i feel like that that is just so well crafted the production on this is stellar um yeah i i i love i mean i love this i'm Actually, <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm feeling. Okay. Wait, hold on. Uh, that beat switch is exactly halfway through the album, and the first half represents femininity, and the second half is masculinity. Really? Okay, let's see where it goes from here. Then I guess. Okay, solo reprise. Solo that I can see under the skirt of a. Oh, guys, they got Jay Z on this album. When I hear that another kid is shot by the purple, it ain't an event. Bending regardless of winning instead of pretending. And bending is way too hard. Solo is. I guess the feeling of just feeling so low. Uh, wow, Andre 3K. I'm sorry, I mean, Jay Z comes in. An amazing interlude. This is nice. Okay, smiley ball. Next song, pretty sweet. Bro, what? Hey! Okay. An interesting song that's not like anything else on this project or anything I've ever heard, period. Um, it's fascinating, but I don't... Like, I respect it for where it is on this project, but I might skip every time. That being said, I respect it more than anything, so it's a smiley ball. This chat sucks. Don't worry. Soon we're going to have memberships where it's going to be exclusivity, where only people who paid $5 per month are going to be able to chat, and everybody else is going to be in the gutter. All right? We're going to throw them in the trash. Money, 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 money. Yeah, we're going to do that for videos, but we're not going to do that for any other type of stream. No, you don't have $5. Then $2. I'm just kidding. We're not negotiating. No, it would be like during streams or whatever where, where we're not recording. It would be like that. Or, or not like that, but yeah. Braddox goes for discriminating against the poor. Next song, Facebook Story, which... Wow, that's... Facebook Story. No, I was story. just telling that I don't want it because I was like in front of a thing. You know? Virtual thing. Next song, Close to You. I thought that was uh, unnecessary. Low shrug. I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but I don't really get why it's here. I mean, maybe it's because after such an extreme song like Pretty Sweet, you have something like that, but I, I don't know. I thought Pretty Sweet was like, I don't know. It makes sense in terms of like, I guess the pacing of the album, but just the song itself, it's like, whatever. Um, next song, Close to You. I'll be honest, I wasn't devastated, baby. I'll be honest, I wasn't devastated, but you could have held my hand through this, baby. Let my mind run. I don't know. I'm actually quite disappointed by this uh, recent run of songs leading this second half so far, as I think that they are all very unnecessary. Like, I'm listening to one giant uh, intermission before the album gets started again. Uh, it's a shrug. Honestly, not loving this last run of songs. Okay, let's continue. Next song, White Ferrari. Mine on the road DJ Khaled Had a good time I let you out at Central I didn't care to stay the plane Kept my mouth closed We're both so familiar White Ferrari It's good This whole song so far feels like a, a sad memory being like replayed in song form I'm loving this. When I forget to speak, was my part of the deal. It's to that on a facelift. Uh, 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 I'm sure it's all another dimension. You 
sick, we're small and not worth the mention. You're tired of moving, your body's aching. We could vacay, there's places to go. Clearly, this is it. Okay, so this is back to the shit that I was really enjoying about this project. The writing here is brilliant, it's very well structured. To give the biggest gut punch possible here, um, I love it. Smiley Ball, uh, favorite song since Nights. Uh, really powerful, uh, extremely powerful. Playing this memory over and and just sort of going in many different directions with it. Another song that I feel like is kind of hard to put a full finger on, but emotionally it makes a lot of sense. So wanted to revisit uh, my personal opinion. All right, next song, uh, Siegfried, 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 Siegfried. What is it again? I don't know. I don't think it's ten. I don't think it's ten. I think it's a solid nine though, which is is great but i think that it, does, it isn't as consistent as uh, some of the other really amazing songs but i th still think it's absolutely stellar like very few issues with it siegfried okay siegfried that's what i said the first time oh big, big oh, head on the beat the markings on your surface your speckled face flood crystals hang from your ears I couldn't gauge your fears I'm not brave And taking in the homeless sometimes I'd rather live outside I'd rather go to jail Dude, I love it. It's so disorienting. I mean, when I think of him talking about a loop, it's, to me, if we're only talking about, you know, what's been given on this album, it seems like him sort of medicate or self-medicating his own problems. Uh, was the instance of him talking about where he's in hell and the loop, I imagine, is him just continuing to do that over and over again. And I wonder if there is going to be a breaking free from this, uh, I guess, mental prison throughout this. But this definitely seems like a, uh, what is it, a rising action or whatever, to, to, or a falling action, whatever the hell they call it. Where's the feathers on my dash from a phoenix dreaming and getting the glimmer of God? I be dreaming. Basically, he's overthinking it and everything he ever wanted could have been there right in front of him, but he decided not to do it because he's not brave, and now he's regretting that and he's dwelling on it, and it's very sad and very fucked up. I do everything for you in the dark. DJ Khaled! <laughs> Chocolate Starfish! Siegfried is uh, basically the depressive, helpless, and horrendously sad conclusion, it feels like, to everything that has been going on. That, that looming feeling that it's too late, and that hopeless repetition of the cycle as it seems like he could pull his way out of it, but rather he just continues to spin the flammable paper on the film that is my life, and it is f***ed up, it is awful. It is heartbreaking, and it is brilliantly crafted. It's a huge smiley ball for me. I think the song is brilliant. It's the slowest song on the album so far, for sure. Uh, and I'm telling you, like, me listening to this crap before, I would not be able to even make it through this song. But I am so unbelievably invested in the wonderful narrative that has been built throughout this entire project uh, that I... I mean, I, I'm, I'm loving this. This is, this is as emotionally potent, powerful, and poetic as you could possibly get for something like this. Next song, Godspeed. Yo, like the You Black Emperor? Play Detroit Till I Die? Uh, no. Co-produced by James Blake. Wishing you Godspeed, I'll always be there for you. Did I accidentally leave Plants vs. Zombies playing in the background? My uh, grand issue with this second half of the album is, unlike the first half, it's messy. Which, it seems like it's doing intentionally. But I, I wouldn't have a problem with it if it was still at least keeping a strong narrative, which I don't think it is. I think that it's very jumbled. I think that it was super easy to follow all, uh, along with everything that's going on, especially emotionally, in the very beginning half of this project. But I feel like a lot of things are sort of falling apart here, as he's falling apart. Which, fine. You know? Makes sense. I just wish that it, like, uh, what am I looking for? Again, I like the songs individually. I'm just kind of complaining about how everything's, like, formatted together now. Because I think the songs individually are strong. But they just aren't as impactful as they just aren't tying together as strongly as, like, 
you know, how uh, Ivy tied in a pink and white, tied in a be yourself, tied in a solo. Like those, for example, like all felt like they were just a continuous string of thoughts, right? That were all just sort of painting a, a picture in a very clear light. I, I feel like this is doing a good job, and I'm not saying that it doesn't have like any of that. I'm just saying it's not doing it as well. But that being said, the song's still great. Smiley Ball. Godspeed is sweet. It's not my favorite on the album, but it's, it's well done. So I like it. Final song, Futura Free. This is almost 10 minutes long. Here we go. I gotta give it a hundred more listens. It's seamless. DJ Khaled! I put a new f yellow beats kind of at me. I woke up in Chris Brown's body. Sir, I want to buy these. You wish you had. Did you record this via tin can and rope? Look, I know this is probably deep and emotional, but I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, I get it. All right. I know. Boo, Bradley. Boo. How dare you awful the worst. I know. I know. I accept the blame. I accept the hatred. Let's talk about the album. Now, Blonde. My original score for this was a five minus. I barely could make I, I, I never made it to the second half. I didn't even know there was a second half. I was like, this shit boring. I can't even sit through this. What the hell is this? Why do people like this so much? It's so skeletal. It's so dull. Second time around. I can see why people uh, think this is a modern masterpiece. I think it's brilliant. I think it's extremely well crafted, super well thought out. It's clear that every single one of these songs had an, am an amazing amount of time put into it. And I think the full narrative works. I think by the end of it, it is crushing emotionally. There is no real happy ending to this. It is just a, a whole lot of sad emotions, but it sticks. I feel like each one of these songs doesn't really rely on the next or the one before to really thrive on its own. But all combined, I think the sum is better than the pieces individually. I think this album is spectacular. I really do. And I'm happy that I gave it another chance because I really think that my entire uh, opinion on this is turned 180. And I love this. I thought this was really, uh, yeah, it, it was mentally provoking. If I did give this album a score right now, it would be an 8 plus to a 9 minus. Uh, more likely a nine minus though. Album shrunk a little bit due to the second half just simply being uh, way too inconsistent for me. So yeah, it's quite quite an increase, I would say, quite an increase. Ugh. Ugh. Damn. I'm happy I opened up to this one. It was a lot different than I expected, but uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a hell of an impression for sure. Do Igor? Sure, we'll do an Igor re reaction though. You guys might not be as happy with that one. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I hope you have a good rest of your day. That is all I have for you. Um, I might edit this today, but I also might take a nap instead. A nap sounds pretty good. Goodbye, everybody.